Ainsco is Britain's biggest mobile crane hire company. At dawn every day, their cranes crisscross the country. All right, let's go for it. Apart from my family, this is the second love of my life. So family and then cranes. They lift everything. Nice and steady. Yeah, that's the best way, mate. Get around. From wind turbines to priceless artworks. I'm feeling a little bit nervous. Keep going. What if it slides out? It won't. It's not going to slide out. They like to have our hands up there. One wrong move will be from us. And it's game over for them. 24 hours a day. Hold it. You've just got to get it right, because if you don't, it could pull the crane over. It's going to go. It's got to go. Seven days a week. Don't pull it, go! Don't get me up there, that's for sure. They keep Britain lifting. Yep, happy on your wish. Not many people can say that they've had the opportunity to work with a ship like that. We're a small cog in a big machine, which helps make this country better. But facing increased competition and having invested millions in the latest cranes, the company is at a crossroads. If we don't deliver, it's a bit like football management. I guess we have some conversations about whether you get to stay for next season. Do I have a few sleepless nights thinking about that? Yes, I do. Preston HQ. I'm in the centre here, yeah. Home to the company's heavy crane division and some of the biggest machines in the country. Still in the centre. Yeah, still good. The cranes range from 500 to 1,000 tonnes. Fire the cranes up in. Let's get a warm gun. And the drivers are amongst the most experienced in the crane world. The bigger the crane, the more in demand the individuals are. They're using bits of kit machinery that weigh several tonnes. They're operating gear that's worth hundreds of thousands of pounds. It's dangerous and it's complex, and we have complete faith in our guys. We'll go wide on this one, mate, so we want to take that lane up. All right. So I'm going to take the out outside lanes, yeah, and go round the, to the right with me. Yeah, no way. John's been a crane driver for 26 years, and today he's taking his traffic-stopping 500-tonner to Dorset. There you go, there's one already, look. Please. Generally, they'll leave you alone. Yeah, look, he's letting us go, look. It's kind of him, isn't he? He must be pull us now up the road. <laughs> Normally, we're not allowed to go and uh, travel during rush hour at peak times. No one wants to be stuck behind a vehicle that's only doing 30 mile an hour. Especially if you're on a long A road and there's nowhere to pull in. And when you do pull in, you get the old uh, hand signals of people tooting the horn. The frustration, I suppose, is just to put it. But uh, what can you do? John and the team are heading to Pool Harbour, home to the UK's largest luxury yacht maker. I mean, there's playgrounds, you could say that, yeah. There's some wealth in this, uh, where we're going today. I think I'll uh, go to the shop next door and get myself a little rubber dinghy. That's all I can afford. They need to lift a fiberglass yacht hull free from its mould and transport it across the boatyard to be fitted out. The front wheel's got to be on the white line, mate, so I can get it. Basically, what we're going to do is pick it up and we we'll completely turn it round 180 degrees to that position, but then allow us to slew round and put the bow of the boat into the uh, dry dock. The last thing we want to do is rip it out and damage it. It's expense, isn't it? Do to be damaged something like here, what's the expense? You know, it's to about five, six million pound boats or even more. As you can see on the wagon, you've got four steel mats. They need to go on the ground first. Yeah, plenty of room here, Matt. Once they're on the ground, we'll extend the legs, the outriggers, onto the mats, stabilise the crane. A busy schedule means most of the heavies team eat on the go. <laughs> it's part of my healthy diet. I like him over there if you have a look. Look at that, Dancer. <laughs> Scrambled egg. <laughs> but when it comes to food, crane driver John likes to think ahead. Chicken tonight. We're prepping for dinner. Used to be at the stop off, greasy spoons, that and this and the other. As you can tell, 
But now, it's so easy to cook. What's she up to? It's all right, not bad. It's a bit hot on fire, eh? but it's not bad because he cooks it and we just eat it, so it doesn't cost us nothing. So it's not often you get something for nothing off John. Away for weeks on end, the Crane Gang's vans are often where they sleep as well as where they cook. It's a good job, but if you're, uh, you, I suppose you are sacrificing quite a bit, really. You do miss being at home, definitely, and your own bed. Can't beat it, can you? But uh, when you're working away, you've got to uh, do the best you can do. I don't mind being away. He's not as good a cook as my wife, but he's getting there. If he saw his presentation out, he'd be all right, I think. Number one. <laughs> The fiberglass yacht hull is moved into position in its mould. Oh, I'm just looking at that up there. It's touching the roof. Tight fit, wasn't it? Very tight. On mobile cranes, the driver sits in a cab close to the ground. From here, they extend and control the telescopic boom. Down it, come on, your hoist, mate. Down it, come on, hoist. OK, John. John has to lift the hull around to the opposite side of the wharf to land it in an empty, dry dock. Start bringing up down, mate, please. Start bringing up down. He'll be relying on his rigging team to secure the yacht to the crane and help guide him through the lift. We are driving the crane by radio. He's just pulling the levers. <laughs> <laughs> OK, hold him there. When you are a crane driver, You've got to trust the bloke on the end of the radio or the bloke is banking you. If you don't, we're all in trouble. Okay, John. A hundred and fifty miles away, two freight wagons have derailed on a busy railway line near Dartford. The driver has escaped unhurt, but one of the lines is blocked and causing serious delays. Experienced riggers Dave and Lee are preparing to head to site and remove the wreckage. We're always on call, got the phones with us, so we'll just, uh, as soon as we get a phone call, we'll go out. You know, in the past, we've been called up one, two o'clock in the morning. There's been an accident on lorries or roads and things, you know, so we'll. We'll go out and uh, do recovery work and stuff like that. Yeah, it's a good challenge, more overtime. You know, it's unpredictable, the jobs that you get called out to, because you go there, you don't know what to expect, and, you know, you have to put your heads together and get it all sorted out and do the job. You know, so it's, it's good. It's more interesting than your every day-to-day, -day, you know, site work. Back at the crash site, a specialist crane has been brought in for the lift, but setting it up is a difficult job. The ground's terrible. You wouldn't really want to set a crane up on this. You can see it's just hard, it's just grass and, 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 and earth. And you've obviously got the track, the rail track, on the other side of that mound over there. So hence why we've got a big crane in to be able to reach the distance to do the weight at that distance. Nice and steady up now. It's the largest telescopic crane in the world. 1,200 tonne telescopic crane. Yeah, it's, it's quite a beast. It takes some building. It'll take us two days to build this rig, and then hopefully Saturday night we'll be uh, lifting. We've come from Teesside, near Middlesbrough. Well, we were mobilised within 12 hours to get down here and do the job. It took us about seven hours to get here. With the cranes, we only travel at 35 miles an hour. The problem is when you come into London, obviously wherever we go with the machine, we have to be routed around the country and contact the local constabularies and councils. So it's usually anywhere between three and five days notice for a movement order. But obviously, with the derailment and it being an emergency, we managed to get one within the 12 hours, which is very rare. A little bit faster, Sam. That's it, second frame's coming up now. Just keep it nice and steady like that. While the crane's rigged, the crashed wagons need to be emptied of their 80 tonne load. What they're doing with that, inside these carts that we're lifting, was cement, 
and with the cement that's actually in the cart, it'd be too heavy for the crane to lift out of that radius. So what they're doing, they're using that pump to go inside the carts that are tipped over and suck out the cement, obviously, to make it lighter. And that's what they're doing. Once emptied, the team will work through the night to lift the wreckage clear of the tracks. Down in pool, the crane gang need to break the fiberglass hole free of its mould. Give me another five, please. Another five. Lifting too hard or too quickly could cause serious damage to the multi million pound yacht. I think she's starting to move. That's it, starting to break out of the mould, basically. Pull that bow round a bit, please. Okay, Tom. Start to slow round, With the hull set free, John and the team have to turn it 180 degrees through the air to land it in the dry dock. when it sat on there. <laughs> good job, well done. He's a good driver, John, but don't tell him. So he's going to get bigger and he won't be able to get out of the cab. Oh, yeah. You reckon? It's been Wayne's first experience of working with the heavies gang. <laughs> Normally, he works on smaller cranes for less money. I'm a 200-ton driver, but my crane's off the road at the minute, being uh, repaired. I'd rather be up there in the warm pulling levers, down here lifting great big heavy shackles about. <laughs> Keen to move up in the crane world, Wayne's sending an email to Heavy's operation manager, Jim. I can't put Dear Jim, can I? What? Oh, you say, you're you're supposed to put... phone, Dear Jim. Only type Jim. I'm never going to get the job he is, like, am I? <laughs> dear Jim. I'll tell you what, oh. what's he put so far? Dear Jim. Like Jim. <laughs> dear Jim. <laughs> dear Jim. <laughs> I shouldn't have put that, should I? Don't put Dear. Just, just scrub Dear out. Oh, God. Right, Jim. Jim. <laughs> <laughs> just dropping you an email to say that I'm interested in coming at heavy cranes. To let you know. No, no. I'm just dropping no. you an email no. to confirm no. my interest in heavy cranes. Right. See how hard it is? It's gone. Oh, the moment. It's gone. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> got a wife and two kids to feed. So, yeah, well, money's important. Especially these days, isn't it? Yeah, so, yeah, hopefully a bit more money would be nice. There's no time to rest for the team. Their next job has already come through. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, We're going to Swansea. I believe first light in the morning. We'll Swansea. get there as soon as, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's lovely chicken. Oh, it smells good, that does. What's up, Wayne? See, I told him his presentation's not the best. <laughs> it's nice. Not bad, is it? <laughs> Gorgeous. It's not bad for roadkill, is it? <laughs> nice one on the road, eh? Mm. Mm. <laughs> That's a loud one. <laughs> <laughs>
Bauma Trade Fair, Munich. The largest construction industry expo in the world. It's a mecca for crane enthusiasts around the globe. Oh, I've been really looking forward to this. Including Ainsco heavy crane driver, Tristan. This is my holiday. You know, some people go to Disneyland, some people go to Devon. You know, I'll go to Balmer. The missus won't be happy now because I, I, won't want to, I won't want to go on holiday anywhere else now. Definitely some kit here, isn't there? Tristam spotted the crawler crane of his dreams. Hey, Tristam. Hello, Hi, Harry. Nice How's it going, you? mate? You all right? That I want to get my hands on. That is, that is, the yeah, brain, yeah. That is what I want to I get my hands on. I have the key for you. I'd like to see in the Yeah, the definitely. Cabin, yes? Yeah. Okay. Come with you. Brilliant. This is beautiful. Have you driven this? Yes. You have? Yes. Oh, I absolutely love it. I think I will be um, trying to persuade the directors that they need to buy one. Or, yeah. Do you mind taking a photograph for me? Brilliant. There will be a lot of jealous people in the UK right now. The company's commercial director, Gareth, is also attending. Now, if you like your cranes, if you like your cranes, this is, uh, I mean, this is Lieber, Lieber Stand. Hey there, mate, you all right? Hello, Gareth, you all right, mate? Good to see you. Yeah, you too, mate. What did you get out? And he's taking time out from business meetings to meet up with Tristan. No, I've, I've been enjoyed it. It's, been, it's good. Good fun. Beautiful. Who wants to push the driver's case. It's good for me to meet meet you out here because we don't ever get to talk to the managers. Well, and and to be honest, the managers aren't really that interested anyway. They're not worried about us. I don't think that's true, and I, I understand why you say yeah. it, but I don't think that's true. We feel that there's no personal touch anymore with the company. In what way? All the managers they get to go home every night. Yeah, yeah. Or most nights. Yeah, you I know, know what you mean. Ninety-nine percent of the time, they they lock up at five o'clock, six o'clock. We're still stuck out on site at midnight. If you finish at midnight, the last thing you want to do is find somewhere. I think I've had to sleep in my car about nine times. Well, that's no that's, way. That's, that's no way. That's no way to live. Well, okay. It's, well, you can see where you're coming from. No, no, no listen. No, no, no operator should be sleeping in the car. No, you know, no, no. I completely understand. But we have been stuck a few times. Even though we're crawler crane drivers, we've still got standards. No, you need some stay, yeah. Do you know what it would be nice if some of the higher management got their hands dirty and come out and saw exactly what we do. Yourself as well, I think you should come out and, no, throw, I'll come and, out. Throw, and throw a hammer about. I'll come out. Well, listen. So, it's been an absolute pleasure. No, it has, and for me. Good yeah, to see you. I will do. See you later, Gareth. Hey, he's open. He's, 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 he's as honest as he can be. He's a good guy, so, and he knows his stuff. So, you know, hopefully he will, um, he will come up trumps, basically. Okay. I've no issue talking to the crane drivers about any issues that they've got. In Tristram's case, it's passionate. Passionate people are always going to be vocal. You just got to, yeah, you got to take on board the comments and see if it's uh, if it resonates across the business and if if it's something that needs to be addressed or not. Midnight near Dartford. Okay, mate. Leave me one gum below. Riggers Dave and Lee have arrived at the site of the rail crash. You having coffee? Yeah, I want coffee. You want coffee? No, no. It's yet another Saturday night away from home. Over the years, you get called up to go anywhere, anytime. I think you know you just adjust to it. It's harder the older you get, isn't it? 
Ain't no spring chickens now, are we? <laughs> that's the way it is. That's, that's the crane. That's crane oil. <laughs> and that's it. Most of the women and all that are pretty uh, understanding. They know. They know that we can be called away at any time or stay a night out. So, yeah, they're pretty good. The wives, really. I think, well, my wife anyway, she wants me to stay away all the time. Right, gentlemen, those coming track side, can you go out into my van, please? 1 a.m. The gang have possession of the tracks and just six hours to lift the two crash freight wagons. We'll be walking down to the uh, derailment site. I do not want you to step outside this check rail because we're right next to a live line. Any questions? No. If you do step outside the rail, you'll be shared out by either me or Joe to get back in. If you keep stepping outside the rail, we'll take you off site. Any questions? No. OK, gentlemen, you are follow them again, Joe, please. Yep. Shag, I might need to work this side first. I've got one uh, chain one side and one the other, and I don't think I'm going to pull it over, Shag. Before supervising the lift, Dave and Lee have to securely attach the chains to the precariously balanced wagons. Ready, Shaq? Where's your arm? Find up where the boat is. Where your wheel is. Yep. All right, yep. Basically, we're <coughs> putting wires down either side of the, the container, the stitch them up right. underneath, and we just sort of like cradle it underneath and pick it out. Hopefully, it'll come up upright for uh, enable us to get it out. OK, Mark, stop pinching up for me again, babe. As soon as this gets nearly tight, Dave, get out of the way. Watch it when it comes down. Are you all right, Shag? Yeah, I'll stay this side. Don't forget to account for the roll on it, Shag, as well, cos as it starts coming out, it's going to start rolling up. It's coming up to 20 now, Lee. I'll get there. OK, mate. OK, mate, it's just starting to lift now. You've got that now, Mark. Pinch it up, babe. Pinch it up. And keep going, babe. Go on, keep going. Keep going. Mate, away you go. OK, mate. The carriage is carried 70 metres away from the track to a safe landing area. OK, mate, thank you. Thank you. One down. And a minute. It's 4 a.m. The remaining wagon is on its side, leaving even less room to thread the chains underneath. Is that enough? No, you're only about a foot in shape. All right, hold it there. Nice and easy. OK, a bit harder. Go on. Right, Shag? Yeah? OK, Mark, stop pinching up there for us, babe. Stop pinching up. The chains are safely secured, but the position of the wagon means it's dangerous to lift. It's a lot further over, leaning over on its side. So, uh, a little bit more care. The other one was virtually upright, so... Well, it didn't matter, but we knew what it was going to do. This one's a little bit more tricky. We don't really know what it's going to do. Jag, there's a sleeper here on that wheel. Look, I think we need to get that out, Shag, because now that's stopping us from pivoting. Can you undermine it, Shag? I 
Right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Mark, stop pinching up again there for us, buddy. It's the most nerve-wracking moment of all for crane driver Mark. Just getting it, um, it's difficult to get it just exactly right because you never know what the chains are going to do. The guys are obviously well experienced, but you've just got to get it right because if you don't, suddenly you lose the weight, you have nothing, and then you have 25 tonnes dropping, which can sometimes double, quadruple the weight in gravity when it drops that quickly, which could then shock the crane, pull the crane, could damage it. If it was hard enough, it could pull the crane over. It's commonly known as a shock load. Keep dripping up. The wagon's off the ground. Give us a little flick right. Give us a little flick right. But Dave and Lee need to turn it so it's upright. Down you go on the hoist. Down you go. Down you go. The plan is to lower one side of it onto Down railway sleepers to try and shift its position. Down you go. Stop back a little bit, Rob, just right, in just case. Just hoist down nice and easy for me, Mark. Nice and easy. Keep your eye on the weight for me, buddy. Um, you might get a bit of judder in where the chains are slipping around, hopefully. That's what we want. So, just to warn you. Okay, we lost half the weight there, bud. Superb, Mark. It's, it's, it's going exactly how we want it to go, babe, that is. That's it, buddy. That's all yours. You've got that. Up you go, Mark. Jib it down, babe. Jib down for me. Down you come, babe. Down you go. The guys are trying to turn the carriage onto its wheels now. You've got to be careful. I'm trying to get it to go down nicely without shocking the crane. Hopefully it won't give us a shake. Half the weight there, mate. Hold it. It's gonna go. It's gotta go. Come on, give us some help. Come and keep going, mate. Slew round to your uh, left a bit, babe. Slew left the turn if you can. Come on. Get over. Well done, babe. Excellent. Beautiful. <laughs> Stop awaiting instructions. It's nice to work with people who know what they're doing. It was, uh, was going to be a difficult lift, and they've, they've made it look easy, which is good. <laughs> When, like, the network rail guy just left and, you know, he says, thanks, lads, great job, everything all safe, you know, it gives you a sense of achievement at the end of the day. Th there's no book to tell you how to do it. You know, you have guidelines, but when you're out there in the field and you have to do it, it's a different story. So, uh, you get your rigs together, you sort it out, um, and it comes off. You know, brilliant, you know, great stuff. You know, I was pleased with how it went. The lads worked well. Um, couldn't ask for no more. Five to six. In its own time. Hold on, thanks for coming. Cheers, mate. Thank you very yeah. much. Chill out, mate. Thanks for coming, mate. Thanks for coming, mate. See you soon, mate. Heavy Cranes HQ in Preston. Doing all, yeah? 
two of the company's largest cranes are heading to Scotland for their biggest lift of the year. Altogether, there's probably over 1,200 tonnes of equipment being delivered over the next two to three days to rig those cranes for the weekend. We've got 20 loads going up for one of the cranes, which is based in Leyland at the moment, and we've got 17 loads on the Doncaster crane heading for the same job site. So in total, we've got 37 wagons heading up to that job site. When these trains start moving, it's a massive operation. All the associated vehicles and operations that go on behind the scenes, quite in depth. We're the people that make it all happen. The team are travelling to inch green docks, where a deep sea carousel needs lifting onto a barge. This gigantic bobbin weighs the equivalent of 20 trucks and will be used to lay 80 kilometres of cable under the ocean. While the mobile crane drives up, the 600-ton crawler cranes transported in parts. And driver Tristam is following by car. The office have got a lot, lot on their plate with the uh, logistics side of things. There's two 600s. There's, uh, there's my CC2800, the flagship, and then there's the uh, TC2800. So you like being in Scotland then? No, not one bit. It's always wet, windy and cold. I think I've come up to Glasgow once and it was sunny and everyone seemed to stay indoors because I don't think they were used to it. They were a bit frightened of the, uh, the big ball of flame in the sky. I'll be glad once we, uh, we get the hell out of here. It's like going behind enemy lines when you go past the Welcome to Scotland sign. With such a heavy and difficult load, Tristam and the gang will spend the next three days living and working away from home to complete the lift. The company have taken delivery of a new state-of-the-art crane. I get first spin. <laughs> Drivers John and Mark have been promoted to operate it, and they're getting used to their new toy. It's a new machine, different technology, and uh, it's about having told it's very user-friendly. So let's hope it is friendly. And then just keep going, just keep going until it stops. That's not at the right angle. It brings up an error in the system. I want with a bang, doesn't it? Yeah. Jesus, this is going to be a nightmare, isn't it? It's a bit finicky. There's a lot of bits and pieces. No. Oh, no! It's only been here five minutes, it's broken. Too many buttons at the minute. John and Mark's promotion has left a vacancy for a new driver in heavies. Today, manager Jim is holding interviews for a position on a 500-ton crane. Um, as I say, it's a full-time job. The, the only downside you've got when you're based in Leyland, you don't get lodged yeah. uh, because you're, you're based here. I'm a fully qualified crane driver, as you can see. Right. The guys that come to heavy cranes, they really predominantly want the larger money. Talking 70 to 80 grand, some of them can make. But they are working a lot more hours, and they're away from home quite a lot. So they are entitled to get that amount of money. Any problems with you being away from home? Because the guys can go away from home for weeks on end. Yeah, I can imagine, yeah. Uh, it won't be a problem. Not be a problem at all. No. After his earlier email, Wayne's up for the job. He wants promotion from driving a smaller crane. A little bit nervous, but all right. I'll say I've never had a job interview before. Never needed to. So, this will be a first for me. <laughs> it's down to the money, isn't it? The more money I can, I can pay off. Everyone's got debts, obviously. The more money I get, I can pay them debts off and sort of live a bit more comfortable. How are you? All right. Not bad. Right, come on, we'll in the office. Right. Well, how are you sitting there, Wayne? Thank you. 
Are you okay? Right. Give us a brief history of yourself. I know you work for Becton Depot. Yeah, um, I was an advanced operator. Uh, then I give that job up and I've been on a 200 since then. Can you see any problems? I know you, you actually live down in the in the London Tip area, don't you? No, I live in uh, Dungeness, so I'm uh, away from home quite a bit. Good. Married? Uh, no, I've got a partner. I've been with her nearly 14 years now. All right. And two kids. Yeah. Right. It's always been the same. I've always worked away, so yeah. she's OK with that. <laughs> as long as I get home now and again. <laughs> no worries. Basically, we're looking for a spare operator. And the spare operator is based in Leon. The downside is you don't get lodged and you get no accommodation. That you have to find. Any little questions on that? Well, uh, it's just I have a place to say, but I just needed... Is there anywhere I can plug in to it? Um, I'm 300 miles away from home, obviously. Well, you got a caravan? Or, or, well, it's, or... A, it's a big car. A big, a big van? Quite a Crowder with one. a bed in it, yeah. yeah. Put a lead through into it. There is That'd facilities for that. Do you have any more questions? Are there any questions or anything you can think of? Mm. No, it's about... No. I'll give you a call Thursday and let you know either way. Thanks for coming up anyway. Thanks a lot, Jim. Right. All right, you All take right. care. Cheers. See you later. A bit nerve-wracking, but... Yeah, it seemed all right. I think I've got a good chance myself, but... Thursday night, wait we'll and see. At Inch Green Dock near Glasgow, it's lift day for Tristam and the gang. Got the brew on already? Ah, I love you. <laughs> oh, hang on, look, these might fit me now. I've been on a diet and I've lost like 20 stone. <laughs> The two cranes and 30 support vehicles have descended onto site. We all have to get on that one, Carl. And have started setting up the lift of the deep sea carousel. Once ready, they'll have just two hours to complete the job. It's definitely a, a challenging lift. We've got a time window to get on that barge. The critical bit really is the is the tide. So what we've got to do is wait for the barge to go down on low tide, and then we've got to get over it as it's coming up to high tide. Touch wood, nothing will go wrong. Lifting the carousel isn't the only challenge for Tristan. He's also got to share the stage with another heavy crane. The, the flagship side, it's, uh, it's the ongoing joke between me and the TC crew that this is the flagship. Which it is. It'll always be the flagship, so... But technically, he can outlift me. But you've got to have a little bit of friendly banter and a bit of friendly rivalry. <laughs> hey, you leave that where that is. He writes it everywhere and then believes it himself, you know? It's unfortunate. It's an unfortunate thing that he's got to do. Oh, my, my crane can lift a hell of a lot more than his. <laughs> In charge of the lift and of directing both cranes will be lift supervisor, Bernie. The total weight of the load is 275 ton plus equipment. It's been calculated that each crane is going to have 136 ton. I'll bank the crane, but there'll be other radios as well, and as we know, as always, anybody can stop the job. Yeah? Julian Coppy. Hey, mate, Bernie. Mark. Yep, yeah, got you, Julian. Tristan. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm ready to go, Bernie. Yeah, thank you. So we're all on the channel, yeah? OK, Tristan, hoist up, please, mate. Keep hoisting, pal. Just starting to take the weight. We're going to float it, get it off the deck. Keep hoisting, mate. I'm looking pretty good for you now. Just, just watch your weights. To keep the carousel level, they have to ensure that each crane takes an equal amount of weight. Let's let's put 50 ton on whatever you are at the moment, both cranes. It's me on the top. Okay. Yeah, I'm 100 ton dead on now. Just gonna lift it, get it clear of everything, and then we're gonna start heading towards the uh, barge. We're off. We're off the rollers here, Dave, by about 30 mil. With the weight level staying steady, the carousel is on the move. 
but harbor winds are starting to spin it, threatening to entangle the crane's ropes. Let's put our hands on this and try and stop it spinning if we can. Changes every two or three minutes. It's up high at the moment, nine metres per second. Their two-hour window is running out. Until they stop the 275-tonne carousel from spinning, the job's on hold. You've got to find its natural place it's going to hang. It, it can't continue. <laughs> I'm Gareth. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. After his meeting with Tristam in Germany, Gareth's decided to witness conditions on site for himself. Hello, Mark. Hello, Gareth. How, How are you? Nice to meet you. He's come to see Heavy's team, John and Mark, out on a job with their new crane. Hi, John. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. Right. How are you? Yeah. Looks impressive, doesn't it? How are you getting on with it? All right. To be honest, I am a little frustrated with it because it's slow. Slow? Yeah, it's slow. Yeah. But it's just... You've got to go with it. It's a machine. You can't make it go faster. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we've got to just try and keep it busy now, well, that's the thing. So this is where you live, then? This is where we live. Yeah. Kirchner the company. Wi-Fi as well? That's, uh, only for works well, if it works. Better than the transits, aren't they? Uh, yeah. It's nice to have a shower. You know, right, for the last 15 years, I managed without one, but it's nice to have one. Smells a whole lot better now. Yeah. <laughs> How much yeah. time are you spending in this then? Well, most of the time, really. Yeah? Yeah. Where's that? Home's uh, Kettering. Is it? Family and stuff? Yeah, family, yeah. Well, grandkids. Yeah. Me and Miss at home when I'm home. That's why I'm knackered. I had the grandkids for three days. Nice. And how long have you been with Ainscaf? Since 1988. I've only been here 13 years. Right. And for you, if you don't mind me asking, is it about driving a big crane? Is it about having I just a... like the. It's... No, it's just a question, it's... is it? Oh, no. Enjoy the work. You... What I like about it, enjoy the work. All right, going from a 500 to a 750, it's the flagship. You know what I mean? Anything mechanically, I like. We need to move. Nice to meet you, mate. Good to see you, John. Appreciate it. Uh... Yeah. Good to see you, Mark. Oh, well, it's good to see the guys. I don't think there's any arms to come out and see how they're doing. Because without those guys, we don't, we don't do lifts and we don't make money. You know, they spend a lot of time on the road, sometimes four, five, six weeks at a time. It's a way of life for these guys. Jackie Charlton. Jackie Charlton Teabag from Northumberland. So although the guys have got the camaraderie of each other, uh, you know, it's not quite the same as having your family with you as well. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a lonely old job for the guys. It's D Day for Wayne. Oh, I've wanted to go heavies before. Today, we'll find out if he got the job on the heavies. Waiting for the big phone call. <laughs> yeah. I've had colleagues texting me, they want to know as well. Just have to wait and see. I keep looking at my phone. <laughs> I hate waiting. I'm impatient. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, when he stops pacing around, he's wearing them boots out at the moment. <laughs> so, but good luck with the boat. It's the call. <laughs> Hello. All right, Jim. Yeah. All right, cheers, Jim. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Got it. Yeah, I <laughs> got the got the job. <laughs> Made me day. We've already had the conversation, me and the girlfriend, and she's fine with it, as long as I do get home. But, uh, yeah, I can't wait. Bigger crane, more experience, more learning, so, yeah. Yeah, well chuffed. OK, Tristan, let's, let's go to your left. Tristan, go to your left. Marcus, just follow around to your right, please. At Inch Green Dock, the wind has died and the carousel has stopped spinning. We're moving again now, we're on the move. Tristam and the team have just 45 minutes before high tide, when the barge will be level with the dockside and in the best position for the carousel to be lowered on. Possible ballast up now. Okay, pal. Ticket just 
stop chest. I'm going to need to put some more weight on me. How are they? Hold it there, Marcus. Yeah, I could do with a bit as well, mate. As the cranes swing toward the barge, they have to be loaded with more weight so that the 275 ton carousel doesn't pull them over. Throw another 20 on either corner. Yeah, I've got a diagonal. That's it, yeah. yeah. So as soon as we get Tristan ballasted up now, that's us now, that's the last push. Just, just slewing it round now, getting it closer to the barge. This is the uh, most crucial bit here, basically. Let a jib down the truck, then, Tristan, please. Jib down, Tristan. Can you jib down as well, Marcus, please? OK, can both trains start lowering off, please? Keep your hand the beam, Mark, please. Both trains lowering off now. To fit it on the barge, the 15-metre-wide carousel has to be landed with millimetre accuracy. This is the, the bit where we're just starting to get it dead set up. Okay. Has landed. It's been more than a year since the London Olympics came to an end. As part of the Games legacy, the former Olympic Park is being converted for public use. And today, the heavies are descending onto site to carry out a major lift. Well, look at this. When it used to be actual roads and paths and houses. A lot of gold medals went in there, yeah. You think all those thousands of people that came here. No more. The team have 12 hours to bring down a 96-ton beam that supported extra seating for the aquatic centre. That big thing up there, apparently, is coming down. It's a heavy piece. The first job is to set the state-of-the-art crane in position. I'm going to get the crane square so the front leg's over that side there. Bluetooth. This is a fun and games. Just very slow. See the speed of the rig is coming out now. No, oh, they fly out. Bluetooth crane. One hour in, and the crane's finally in place and ready to be raised for the lift. But there's a problem. Some steel girders are in the way. It's an issue for us because we throw that super lift up, it's going to hit the column. It's no good. I can't see us rigging this afternoon. No. Because we'll get a crane in now, take them stills out. I was wanting to be rigged by now. Six o'clock this morning, we haven't even put a pad down yet. Before they can lift, the team will have to wait until the girders are taken out. What we need now is a campfire. Start yeah. singing ging gang gooly gooly gooly. Yeah. Heavy's HQ. And Wayne started weeks of training on a 500 ton crane. So, what we're going to do now is with a jib down, get to a reasonable uh, height, press F8, and then the limitations button, and we can go back to the screen. Stop. Okay. Happy with the height limitation? Yeah. With no lodgings provided, Wayne's getting accustomed to his new life away from home. And this is where I stay. <laughs> well, it's all right like this because I'm plugged in with a lead and I've got showers, but if you didn't have that, it'd be difficult. <laughs> You'd have to find a hotel, but I'm used to it. 
It's quite comfortable, actually. It ain't that bad. Right now, I'd probably be sitting on the settee, eating me dinner. <laughs> what has been made for me? And helping me girls on the computer or something. Leave it as you find it. Tell one from Essex originally, can't you? You gotta smell good, didn't you? <laughs> that's it. Living the dream. Wind chop. Chop chop. Over at the Olympic Park, the problematic girders have been removed. And the gang are finally able to rig the crane. That's close to the stairs. Good job we took this bit out, innit? Otherwise we were knackered. Could have never have done it. A second crane will be used to help lower the 90-meter-long beam to the ground. Hold it there, please, John. Nice and easy, mate. Take slow. With the whole operation overseen by lift supervisor Michael. We've not, not done nothing this heavy before. All this long. Michael's first task is to be raised up 50 metres on a hydraulic cherry picker to attach the cranes to the beam. Oh, there. Tell you what, this is quite high up, mate. <laughs> Don't break the cable so we come crashing down. Slew round to your right, please, John. Each end of the beam has to be bolted to the crane by hand. With each bolt weighing in at 20 pounds, even a hard hat wouldn't offer any protection if they were to be dropped from this height. Touch more on the oars, please, John. Down on the oars, mate. Nice and steady. Down you come. Right, hold that there, John. Hold that there, mate. Go on, then, so let's tighten it up. Look at that. Got it, mate. Any hole. Well, that's us now. You can lift that beam down now. Start pinching it up, George. Just keep pinching it up, legs. Safely back on the ground, Michael has to direct both crane drivers with pinpoint precision to lower the massive beam into its narrow landing area. Well, down here, it don't look that, it don't look that big. Quite, it's quite a size. I'm going to need you to jib down, John, and I'm going to need you to jib back, John. Right, that's you jib down, JD. Nice and steady, mate. Start coming down on your head. Start jibbing back, please, John. I'm a little bit confused, because both drivers are called John. Communications aren't the only problem. He's shaking his head. Hold it there, John. Hold it there, John. They're going to move this cherry picker out of the way. It's broken down at the minute. Just have to hold fire, lads, till they move that cherry picker out of the way. Well, the cherry picker is broke down where we've got to land the beam. I don't know why it's so complicated. Right, let's start pinching it up again, please. Obstruction removed, the lift is back on. This John here needs to jib down about another half a metre up so he's clear of the uh, steel work. All right, so I'm going to walk over to the other side so I can see how it's coming down. All right, legs, nice and steady. Just down on the oars, please, legs. 
down you come. Yeah, just keep it coming as you are, lads, as you are, nice and steady, down on yours, just keep it coming. Yeah, go on, slew him left, mate. I'll keep slewing John right. Go on, keep it coming down, lads. Keep it coming down as you are, nice and steady. It's looking good. Coming down on yours, lads. Nice and steady. Hold it there, please, everybody. Hold it there. All stop. John, hold it there, mate. Some days are easy, some days are long. 90 metres long and weighing almost 100 tonnes, the beam has been landed safely. Job done. Bad enough living here when you have to put up with this. Uh, someone's parked really close to my, my mobile home. <laughs> it's just a bit of a struggle to get in. Wayne's completed his training at Heavy's. That's a 500 tonne certificate from Lee there. I'm trained on a 500, yeah, basically, by the manufacturer. But living away from home, is taking its toll. Five weeks, I'm on my fifth week away from home. <sighs> Another one going over with his family. I think it's about the time I did that. But... See a couple of Father's Day's card of my two daughters. That's the youngest one there. She done that herself. That's the both of them, that is. <laughs> it made me want to go home. Bought a lump to me throat, actually. <laughs> Number one dead. <laughs> the hardest bit's just sitting here on your own every night, thinking what to do next. <sighs> I'm sure I'll survive like I usually do. <laughs> next time... This is where we found out whether the engineers are any good. Stop. It's back to business for the crane gang. John, that's just a bit spot on. Oh, there you go, look at that. Flying tigers. But do the numbers add up? It's a big dip. It's four million dip. As they battle the elements. Blow the gal, you can hear it. You can see the wind's well up. Ah! Bit of bush for you there, Cash. Bit of bush, Cash. <laughs> Miles away from home. This is it. Living the dream. Brand new drama over on BBC One now, crime cracking by any means. Back here on BBC Two, how did the culture from the shtetls survive? Simon Sharma's story of the Jews continues next. Whilst over on BBC Four, the film of all films, Orson Welles' Citizen Kane. Thank you.